think one of my most favorite things about Mozart is that no matter how many times you've sung a role or a particular piece, you find something new each and every time. And I think that for me, that's where Mozart's true genius lies. As a singer, it's easy to get caught up in just thinking about Mozart's melodies because that's what we generally get to sing. Those beautiful melodies can also be a huge challenge when singing Mozart. Uh, you obviously want to sing as beautifully as you can and give the music everything that you can, but for me in particular, I don't always concern myself with making the most beautiful sounds just for the sake of the sounds. I try to communicate the best that I can, um, and sometimes that means making a, a sad sound or an angry sound rather than just a beautiful sound. And so I think finding the balance in that, particularly in Mozart, is, is something that I would consider difficult. I think the best thing for the audience about an all Mozart program is that they can hear Mozart's genius whether he was writing for voice, writing for piano, writing for another solo instrument within the orchestra, or writing for the entire orchestra and the piano and the voice. He just truly, truly excelled at every facet of composition, and I don't know how many composers you can honestly say that about. The first aria that I sing on the program is Basta Vincesti a Non Lasciarmi. And the text is by Metastasio, and it tells of Dido begging Aeneas not to leave her. She's not successful. I don't mean to spoil that for anyone. But uh, the aria itself is fairly simple. It's not particularly virtuosic, which I think enables the singer to really delve into the emotions and not have to sort of worry about gearing up for anything that's, that's too particularly difficult to sing, but really focus on expressing the text. The second aria, Chi io mi scordi di te non ti mer amato bene, was written almost 10 years after the first of Basti Vincesti, and it is definitely more virtuosic. Um, there are more stylistic changes within the aria itself. It doesn't sort of just promote one affect. And so it's exciting to get to sing that and to express all of these different emotions within the context of one aria. The final aria that I sing on the program is Un Moto di Gioia, which was used as an additional aria for uh, Act 2 in the Nozze di Figaro, and it replaced Venite in Ginocchiativi, in which Susanna dresses up Carabino in front of the Countess, and then a bunch of hilarity ensues. Um, but Un Moto di Gioia is sort of a generic, a more generic aria rather than being so descriptive as Venite in Ginocchiativi. Um, but it's just, it's beautiful and so charming, and I've never actually sung it in performance before, and I'm so glad to finally get the chance to share this little gem. My warm-up routine used to be, you know, sort of sleep in the day of, have a nice breakfast, take a walk, maybe do some window shopping or real shopping, maybe take a nap watch some terrible TV on Hulu while I curled my hair and got ready for the performance. But now that I'm a mom, <laughs> my backstage and, and pre-performance -per -pre routine is basically make sure that my baby has a nap, or two or three, um, make sure that she gets some food and that I get some food and that I don't have any food on me. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> I haven't been back to North Carolina in a couple of years, but my husband and I were actually married in Greensboro, and so anytime I do go to North Carolina, it brings back happy memories of that. But the last time I sang with the symphony was for Handel's Messiah, and they played it so beautifully, and it was everyone was so nice, and Raleigh is charming, and I'm really excited to see Chapel Hill because I've never been there before.